Good morning, everyone. My name is Julian Baptista, and I am your Director of Community Life and Learning here at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Greater Lynn. If it's your first time here, we are so glad that you're here. Today is a special service because it is our annual meeting, and we also have a couple of other uh, interesting services coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. I just want to let you all know that if it is your first time here, we would love it if you could sign our guest book. It's located on the welcome table just as you walked into our uh, church building. And we are also broadcasting the service in our parish hall. So if you need to leave the service for any reason, if you start uh, coughing your lungs out or anything like that, and you don't feel like uh, disturbing things, you're welcome to go in there and uh, watch and listen to the service. I'd also like to let you all know that next Sunday is our beach service. It's going to be a blast, and it's always a uh, really beautiful uh, way of enjoying nature and <coughs> spirituality. And also, the week after, we are going to be marching in the uh, North Shore Pride Parade. Uh, so please contact Mike Salona. Um, you can either email him or uh, talk to him at coffee hour. Now I'd like for you to all please remove your cell phones and set them to their most worshipful setting as we enter the spirit of worship. Thank you. Good morning, congregation. In this hour, we join in common quest for the discovery of life's deeper meaning, for the enduring strength of hope, for the inspiration of joy and laughter, for the mind's illumination by the torch of wisdom, for hearts warmed by the mysteries of love, for souls enriched by the winds of the living spirit, as we join in community today and sh uh, ex experience, practice, uh, the democratic process, uh, we'll begin by joining our voices in our opening hymn number 324, Where My Free Spirit Onward Leads, number 324 in your gray hymnal.
Blessed is the fire that burns deep in the soul. It is the flame of the human spirit touched into being by the mystery of life. It is the fire of reason, the fire of compassion, and the fire of community. It is the fire of love burning deep in the human heart, the divine glow in every life. I would like to invite all the children to join me for a children's worship and also for some planting of our church gardens. Have fun. We're actually going right out, guys. Gloria. Here in this church, and in the Lynn and Swampscott congregations that merged to become the Unitarian Universalist Church of Greater Lynn, human beings have gathered for centuries, seeking a higher purpose and deeper life than they could find alone. We are grateful today that three more individuals have found their way here and have decided to make a commitment to this faith community. I invite Mary Gatlin, Jason Gatlin, and Tara Gadla to join us up here. Go ahead, Gloria. Tara's not here, I guess. Yeah. Mary and Jason, you share a desire to deepen your commitment to UUCGL by officially joining the church. This commitment demonstrates that you wish to be formally associated with this body, to consider the well-being of this congregation part of your own well-being. This is a decision that you did not make lightly and that you will not abandon lightly. It confers upon you the right to vote in congressional me congregational meetings. <laughs> I know. It means that you may someday be asked to serve on the governing board and thereby be a chief decision maker and steward on behalf of the congregation. To become a member of the church means to embrace its ministry as your own. We hope that as members of this church, you will allow yourselves to know and to be known that you will both minister to and be ministered unto, that you will love and be loved. We hope this also for your children, whom we also welcome into this family of faith as participants and friends. The relationships we form in our church are based on needs of the soul, needs that render each of us vulnerable and therefore reliant on each other's grace and goodness and generosity of spirit. A member of, members of the church, we pledge to be guardians of each other's spirits, to respect the ultimate privacy of each one's struggle, and to believe in each one's inherent dig dignity. We are guided by the words of our covenant and our unison affirmation that reminds us that love is our doctrine and that we believe that we are growing into harmony with the divine. We welcome you on behalf of the minister, the staff, the board of trustees, and the congregation, all of which have played a part in your path to membership. We welcome you to this community with all our hearts, and we extend to you now the right hand of fellowship. This is a, a gesture going so, back, so far back in time, we really don't know where it originated, but we've been doing it in our churches for at least centuries. Let us pray. Dear God, we are grateful today for the sense of calling that has gathered us together in this place and which has given us one to another in the works of peacemaking, truth-seeking, and service to the principles that affirm human dignity 
and divine benevolence. We remember in this hour all those who came before us, those men and women of blessed memory whose own commitment to religious community made it possible for us to be their spiritual heirs and to love what they loved. And we are grateful for those who even today give a large portion of their thoughts, their dreams, their sleepless nights, and the labor of their waking hours to this congregation, and who are never afraid to share the good news of Unitarian Universalism wherever they may. Today we welcome among us officially three new members, Mary and Jason and Tara, with special joy. Do we welcome them into our covenant? And congregation, I invite us to affirm now our covenant. Love is the doctrine of this church, the quest for truth its sacrament, and service its prayer, to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to serve human need, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine, Thus do we covenant with each other and with God. Amen. practice to take an offering every week because we understand the spiritual importance of acts of generosity. So we take an offering not just to support the ministries of this congregation, but also to send out into the world uh, as a form of love with, a, with an organization that we uh, want to support. This month, that organization is the Clara Barton Center, which is a camp that supports uh, children and, uh, with diabetes and their families. You can read more about it in your order of service. It was chosen by the Unitarian Universalist Women of Greater Lynn, who have a, a lovely and long connection with Clara Barton Camp. The morning offering is most gratefully received. Mm.
I just want to say that this is the last service for this program year in the sanctuary. And let's say thank you, Mother Nature, for making this such a beautiful day. Because how many times have we been at annual meeting and we're sweltering? Thank you. So the service next week is at Fisherman's Beach, just down at the bottom of, uh, Par not Paradise Road, um, uh, that. Everybody's saying different words, what? Where the boats are, okay. And Whiskey and um, um, uh, Dr. Dave are helping set up. And Gloria's offered to help set up. Bruce is gonna be off with his daughter getting, walking her down the aisle. Congratulations, Bruce and Claire. Um, so that will be next week. And then following that week, all of our summer services are in the air-conditioned parish hall. And please refer to the website soon to, to see the roster of speakers, including uh, Claire Wilson and Tom Shade will be doing a really, really wonderful series on the like Unitarian Universalism and the progression of ideas through our history. He's a great preacher and, um, and he's not pedantic and boring as he shares this history. Some of you remember him from last year. So we brought him back. We shaped the arc of this year, this program year, as a circle. Draw the circle wider was the theme of our ministry, the metaphor we used for our mission to think expansively and to prepare for a future where we would not fairly passively expect people to find us in the traditional way on Sunday mornings, but would intentionally begin to create a program and community life that reached out to them. We drew the circle wider, doing and thinking differently, and making some big changes. As I reflected over the year just concluded, as I was writing my annual report and getting ready to be with you today, it occurred to me that a circle is an interesting configuration for a progressive institution to embrace. There's a lot more to it than meets the eye. You know, as Americans, as Westerners, we stand in a tradition that has instructed us that time marches forward, and so should we. Questing always for the new and ever moving forward. And when, we, uh, when the Unitarian Universalist lyricists rewrote onward Christian soldiers, because we like to do that, we took traditional hymns and we wrote new, new words to them. They wanted to change that militaristic uh, wording, but what they wrote was forward through the ages in unbroken line. And that, in some ways, begins to sound to my ear just as kind of militaristic and kind of conquest-oriented. With our new awareness these days of those instincts, of that instinct to keep progressing no matter what you're marching over, you know, keep building, keep technology uh, increasing, no matter again who it tramples along the way, including Earth. I thought, wow, there's a little more countercultural to our embrace of the symbol of the circle than I first realized, and I think than any of us maybe first realized. After all, there is that expression, you're going in circles. And that's not a compliment. That's often as an expression of concern. So to say we're drawing the circle wider, yeah, it's expansive, but still, are y'all just going in circles? No, no. The circle is a symbol of eternity. It is sacred. It marches over no one. It is the shape of the sun, of our planet, of wholeness. To embrace the circle is potentially an interruption 
and a disruption and a rejection of the violence to self, others, and creation that can be the result of endless questing, of endless forward, linear motion, that kind of quest that we know can lead to an obsession with conquest. To abide within a circle of motion is to recognize that our job, our calling, and our journeys are not linear propositions where we move forward in exhausting and eternal pursuit of some unattainable ideal beyond the horizon, but that we move in a cyclical motion, that we are born, we live, we die, and we leave a legacy of life that helps to root in the next cycle of gentle growth. And so this cycle, this circle proceeds not in competition and not in domination and not in endless questing, but in blessing. As the indigenous American poet Joy Harjo writes, like eagle rounding out the morning inside us. Draw the circle. Draw the circle wide. Draw the circle. Draw the circle wide. No one stands alone. We stand side by side. Draw the circle. Draw the circle wide. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Mike Salona. I am your humble and honorable clerk, uh, rounding out my year uh, uh, doing the clerk duties. And this is kind of the, the big one. I have to run the annual meeting. So um, please be kind. Um, so the first thing I need to do is uh, get a show of hands that we have at least 15 members of the church here present. Can people raise their hands if you are members? Yeah, OK, 15. Um, <laughs> Okay, so the annual meeting of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Greater Lynn will come to order. Turn this over to, oh, never mind. I have another thing I need to do. Um, one thing we need to do is we need to approve the annual report. Um, it's been at the back of the church. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of really great information in there. I know a lot of, you know, there's a lot of good work that happens at this church during the year. Um, one of the things that the groups have to do at the end is actually put it all down on paper, try to summarize it in a page or two. Um, and so it's a good way, again, of just trying to see all the good that is being done in this church. So um, are there any points of discussion with the annual report that people would like to bring up? All right, there is none. Um, so, Alyssa? May I have a motion to accept the annual report? So, and a second? second? All those in favor? Um, Any opposed? All right, the annual report has been accepted. All right, next up is going to be Scott. He's going to oversee the election of the slate for the upcoming year. Thank you, Michael. 
For anyone that doesn't know me, uh, my name is Scott Noka, and I have been serving as a co-VP with my co-VP, Rebecca Green, for this past year on the Board of Trustees. And uh, while I have a moment and that the mic in my hand, I just want to first say <clears throat> my personal thanks to everyone that served on the board with me. It's been uh, quite an honor. I really, uh, really appreciated uh, the opportunity to work with everyone. I also want to thank anyone that's considered serving on the board um, as we've talked to different candidates. And I most certainly want to thank anyone that is on the slate for next year that's going to be joining us. Um, your <clears throat> willingness to be a part of the leadership of this church is greatly appreciated. In the annual report, we have a slate of nominees to lead the church on the Board of Trustees for the upcoming year. Among those names would include my own as president, um, as past president, Lissa, who's been serving this year. Vice president would be Michael Salona, treasurer, Sarah Cecil, clerk, Rebecca Green, and then our at-large trustees would be Eileen Cummings, Suzanne Forgione, Jeff Gunther, Dawn Stewart, and Steve, and Steve Young. Thank you to everyone that's uh, agreed to be a part of this slate for the upcoming year. As the incoming president, I'd like to make a, uh, I'd like to call for a motion to approve this slate to lead the board next year. So All right. A second? second. All right. Can we please have a call up, have a vote then to approve the slate? It would appear to be a yes. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> Good morning. Most of us have had some experience with a board or governing body in other aspects of our lives or even different religious homes. They come in all shapes and sizes and temperaments and the experience of serving can be more or less moving for those of us who serve. Let me say a few words about the Board of Trustees here at UUCGL. I can say they're wonderful and they are. I can say they're hardworking, loyal, consistently on time, kind and funny, and they are. But what I wanna to say today is what I see when I arrive at church for the board meeting and set out the plates and the silverware and napkins for our pre-meeting potluck and wait for the board members to appear and settle in. With each new arrival, I am struck by how fortunate we are to have such people working on our behalf to move our church forward into the future. Each one has put in the time to read the materials up for discussion and put in the thought and effort to make progress on their individual board projects. Each one has brought their best self to the table, their most positive and compassionate and spiritual self, not to be the one to say the clever thing or expound on the righteousness of their point of view, but to carefully assess the questions up for discussion in view of our vision of ministry and their personal discernment. They did not come, they did not become board members by accident. Each and every one of them has put their fingers in the dough of community here and found ways to enhance it and support it before taking the plunge and entering official church leadership. I thank this board from the bottom of my heart. Two members are rolling off the board this month. Linda Jones brought her experience as a longtime church leader to her work with us this year and her goodwill and intelligence and humor. We thank you. Claire Campbell extended her presidential arc with us from three to four years when we were unable to nominate a vice president in 2016. During her time as vice president, president, and past president, the board led the church through a rigorous time of study, discernment, policy work, vision work, and decision making. Claire was the leader we needed, and I hold her in deep regard and appreciation. May I ask the board to come stand up here with me? Several people have told me that they liked what I wrote in the annual report. I said, the Board of Trustees is not a place for cynicism or apathy, as we have important work to do to ensure that this spiritual home will be here for those that come after us. This board has embraced that aspiration wholeheartedly. Thank you.
I'd like to hold up the board committees without which we couldn't maintain our church. I urge you to read their reports in the annual report to find out just who they are and what they do. I would like to thank the committee members who are rolling off this month. Would you come forward to accept a token of our appreciation? Rolling off the properties committee are Fred Clapp, Ken Drury, and Mary O'Connell. Rolling off the investment committee is Sarah Pruitt, and rolling off the finance committee are Sarah Pruitt and Bob Diderio. Bob. <laughs> Taking a nap? Thank you. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> Ministry teams are a little bit different from committees in that membership is fluid and the work is program-based. And the, the committees of the board do the work of stewardship, of property and fiscal stewardship. So rather than report to the board as the committees do, ministry teams work with program staff and the minister to equip everyone who is interested to connect with areas of ministry, lifespan religious education, or what we call faith development, hospitality and membership, the wider denomination, social justice, ecological concerns, church history, Sunday services. Ministry teams are not determined, their existence is not determined by bylaws, but by the current priorities of the members of the congregation and the minister and the vision of ministry, which is put together by the board and the minister and the congregation. So everything is connected. I want to acknowledge the following people who are team leaders to thank them for being the connectors and the conveners, for organizing programs, for being creative, and for their deep caring about the programs of the church. Three of these leaders are rotating out of chair roles to allow new members to have the experience of leading a team. We're so grateful to these people and excited about new leadership stepping up. Several, of, um, several people of whom joined the church in the last year or two. So this is a really healthy development. For denominational connections, Kathleen Henneberry. For the social justice ministry team, Martha Curry and Jeff Gunther. For the membership and hospitality ministry team, Suzanne Forgioni. Um, the new chairs are Gloria Kozlowski and Ruth Griffin. Faith development chair ha is Nikki Buscemi. The church history ministry team chair is Dean McKinnon. Green sanctuary ministry team is Tony Banderwitz. And I'd like to invite all of those people up um, to get a little token of our appreciation, of my appreciation. See, Tony is not here today. The, um, the design on the cover of these notebooks is uh, a tree of life with the Unitarian Universalist principles. Um, Kathleen, we can come to you, dear, or are you doing okay? Okay. Um, with the Unitarian Universalist principles printed um, underneath them, and that's meant to remind people of the Green Sanctuary Ministry team's theme this year was forests and woods. So that's for Kathleen. That is for you, ma'am, and I have a... That's for you too, Martha. Thank you. Suzanne, that's for you. And I left something at home for you, so. <laughs> uh oh. It's ripped. Dean, thank you so much. Thank you. Nikki, thank you so much. Is Jeff still here? Because yes. he's, he's retiring as well. So, um, I also want to thank the Ushers team. Um, Mike Martell and Mary O'Connell are the chairs of that team. Our videographer, Steve DeVoe, and uh, the chair uh, of the Unitarian Universalist Women of Greater Lynn, Joanne Bryan. Are, Joanne, are you here this morning? Okay, come on up. I know you're not officially the chair, but you did a lot of organizing. 